So I now have the privilege and honor of joining and bringing into the discussion on um, Nani, the persons I made mention of earlier on. Let me just give you a little bit of information on them. Mrs. Beverly Carey, Maroon historian. Mrs. Carey is now 83 years old, I'm told, and is a Maroon historian and elder from the Moortown community. She has more than 50 years of research and study experience on the Maroon subject matter. She proudly notes that her maternal ancestors were with Nanny at Old Nanny Town. Mrs. Carey, it's such a wonderful privilege and honor to be in this space sharing with you. So let me introduce now Colonel Wally Sterling, Moortown Maroons. Wally Sterling, Chief of the Maroons Moortown. This included the entire part of the Upper Rio Grande Valley and has been in this, he's been in the position as Chief since 1995. The Rio Grande Valley is a beautiful place, you know. He, he has learned a lot from the elders to whom he's greatly appreciated. Uh, Chief, how are you doing? Colonel Sterling, good to see you, good to see you. Let me now introduce a lady I met maybe two or so years ago, Colonel Marcia Douglas, Charleston Maroons. Kim, Marcia Kim Douglas, is the acting colonel of the Charleston Maroon community and spokesperson for one of the several Maroon communities in Jamaica. Acting Colonel Douglas stands as the first woman to occupy any such position of authority among them in the present day. I tell you, we're breaking some ground here, women. All right, Paramount Chief Mama G, Mama G of Charleston Maroons. We'll I'll tell you a little bit about her in just a while. Alex Moore Minot, a compound Minister of Foreign Affairs, okay, and Diplomacy. And uh, he's Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Diplomacy for Akampong Maroons. He, he is uh, uh, the holder of a degree in international relations from the University of the West Indies and a proud Maroon of the Rio Grande Valley and apprentice to Major Charles Aarons, a world-renowned culture bearer of the Maroons in the Rio Grande Valley. It's good to have you, uh, Mr. Alex Moore Minot. Ms. Inet, uh, rather, Annette Aarons, Moortown uh, Maroons, director Granny Nanny, the uh, cultural group, director of the Granny Nanny cultural group. She's a daughter of Major Charles Aarons and is a renowned culture bearer of the Maroons of the Rio Grande Valley. She's a descendant of Granny Nanny and has born and raised four children who are all prominent practitioners of the ancient Maroon culture. I do want to give you very quickly the, um, I think I have Gamma, Gamma Gloria Sims. Tekina Nuna is a woman of the African diaspora, a spiritual worker and community build a um, rooted family in the Maroon and Rastafari traditions. And um, as Gamma, Gloria continues to pursue her ultimate vision. She sees the restoration of the family as a must. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor, privilege and pleasure to be sharing this space with you. I want to, poems have been written about Nanny. Research papers have been done on Nanny. Uh, songs have been done about Nanny. And of course we have Nanny, Queen Nanny of the Maroons, national hero. And of, that is an honor that was bestowed on her March 31, 1982. I think I want to begin with the elder woman in this group at this time, Mrs. Carey, to just put, Queen Nanny in context for us based on your research over these many years and your lived experience. Could you unmute your mic, please? Great. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, um, <clears throat> Nanny, I think, we think, came, we don't know exactly when she came, but she arrived sometime between 1690 and say 1720 into Port Antonio. She was destined for one of the Rio Grande estates, Foxes River, Berrydale area, where the Foxes River comes off the mountain into the Rio Grande. But her ship was um, shipwrecked in Port Antonio just by the, the library, and they were able to escape because of the confusion. They escaped up, up we, we think, um, and not to Bay River and over into Berrydale because the river goes right down into Berrydale. Once she hit Berrydale, even before she gets to Berrydale, she's looking up on the Blue Mountain. And uh, we have her placed um, mostly connected with um, Watch Hill, Pumpkin Hill, which is part of the Golden Vale property. But at the time, um, Golden Vale 
was not consolidated. There were several estates that were there, principally Nightingale Grove. So that's when she came and um, essentially she found her way into Nannytown. And at a time when the most, the, most of the leaders were women at the time. And um, they, were, they, they mentioned Dino, Molly, and then of course at a later period, you get people like Bemba who committed suicide with her two children rather than allow, jumped over a precipice rather than allow soldiers to track her down to Nanny. So, um, but you know, when I think about Nanny, the, the, the part about her, her um, as, a, as a warrior, as a mystic is very important, but there's something that sticks in my mind. I found a writer calling her Mama Nanny. What a wonderful, Mama Nanny, Mama Mama. of the nation, Mama yes. Nanny. And you see, it pairs it out because one of the first things I learned when I went to Morton um, as, a, you know, as a mature person to visit was that um, Nanny taught the women how to, how to bury up the thatch on the Junker Mountain and the place is called Barry Hill. And I remember who told me it was one of the Parsley women, Martha Donna, I think it is Martha Donna. She taught me I should keep on rubbing it in, Barry Hill. I know you want um, Nanny teach to bury up or Nanny um, bury up the, the bury up the thatch for. In other words, behave yourself. Are you I know you want Nanny love? You know, may have a place in it. Yes. But it's why well, I think it is important, you see, is because um, if the Maroon men, the warriors were there, they would have buried up the thatch. When, when um, Nanny Town was broken, overturned about 1731, Nanny took up the picnic and the women and she dashed away, went over the Junker Mountain because there are two mountains, you know, Blue Mountain on one side and Junker Mountain. Junker Mountain is bare and full of rock, more or less a cockpit, except it's not a cockpit. And um, Nanny went over there and uh, that period of time is called cutter wood. In fact, you have cutter wood, scatter wood, you know, catcher wood. And we know the place where it's located. So essentially, um, what when I think of Nanny, I think of her particular nurturing skill for those women yes, and children. Indeed, indeed. And the I fact that one of one of and the fact that you've used the term Muma Nanny. You know, I have a dear friend, Clyde McKenzie. Whenever Clyde calls me, he greets me Muma, and it's a tear of and it's a term of endearment and respect. <laughs> and you know, let me bring the, I noticed Annette Aarons and Alex Moore Minot were nodding when you were speaking just now. Let me ask um Annette, what is it that Mrs. Carey said? Remember to unmute your mic. What beautiful, what is it that Mrs. Carey said that got you nodding about Nanny? Um, all of she said is true, and that lady that she was talking about, Miss Martha, is my auntie. So awesome. Okay. Ah, and she shows her respect. So tell me now, what in addition to what Mrs. Carey said, what your auntie Miss Martha tell you about Nanny? Um, and Martha, she was a prominent woman in the in the maroon. Uh, both of them were, you have Martha and you have Ermin, that's Major, they call her Major as her name, and then my dad. They were sisters and brothers, and they were prominent in the Maroon history, and the, the culture, they sing and dance a lot. So she taught me a lot of things. Annette, Annette, let me interrupt. You're a director of the Granny Nanny Cultural Group. What, yes. Give me, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this to you. Um, give me a song that is performed by your group that has a lot of meaning? Um, like we have one that we say maroon there, you know, gone with me. me. Sing it with me here, you know. Come. Gano, say we gone me. Gano, we gone me. Oh, this is so rich. Mm. 
Maroon there, we not gone away. No there, we no not gone away. Alex, you left a compound now as a foreign affairs minister, and you reach up, catch up side of it. You know, even though we know where you come from, Rio Grande I Valley. Actually, I actually live in Northern. I know. I was just teasing you, but you're the foreign affairs minister over over a compound. All yeah. right. As uh, so, we've heard from um, Mrs. Carey about the role of women maroon and women leaders after nanny and during that time what is your understanding of nanny's contribution to the history of the maroon community across the length and breadth of jamaica well i think that single-handedly maybe the greatest contribution that nanny would have made was to bring the abeng right the, the use of the abeng as a as a technology right so this enabled long distance communication something that the british did not have at the time stop right, alex of... there are people from all over jamaica and all over outside of jamaica and the diaspora and beyond the diaspora listen what is the abeng so you lift up yours mine mine is just a, a replica made out of wood but you have the real abeng you cannot speak about the abeng and not explain from what it is made and then you have to go blow it you better have good lungs to blow it in that tonight no, I, I am I am not the blow of the abeng at all. You can't blow but it. But I but I given Mr. Smart a, a video with the actual oh, abeng blow. Okay, video. but what is it made from, please, it's so that people understand? Horn. It's a cow's horn. A cow's horn, the horn of right. a cow. Right. right and that right. is what he, you notice that alex said alex more minor said that it was you it you blew and it a, and sent messages it's a, it's a it's a side blown signaling horn right thank you right. A side blown signaling horn why should we be celebrating nanny in 2022 well really and truly the role of women and especially strong women in in our island is very important you know when we look at all that women go through in the society to ensure that their children are fed clothed and educated it's much the same sort of struggle that nanny and the women around her would have had right she had to be a mother in a time that was very very unsure you know at times food would have been slim right at times you know maybe they wouldn't have good shelter because if running through the woods and it rains torrentially in the rear grand valley so there would have been days that would have been cold and wet running right? for your life running for your life essentially essentially so yeah. nanny represents the spirit of the strong woman strong indigenous woman of the earth who had that connection to the earth and that connection to the most high creator and let me just bring um colonel marcia douglas in unmute your mic colonel marcia douglas i met you at the u.s embassy i don't know if you'll recall this about two or so years ago when prof came to unmute your mic colonel marcia unmute your mic unmute yeah that's yeah. it when professor remind me of his last name he had come and uh, did some fantastic work with the maroons you remember who that was no, unmute your mic. You've put it on mute. Yeah, that's it. Leave it, leave it. Right. I'm not troubling it. Right. Professor Ar Arcourt Fuller. Yes, Harcourt Fuller. That's where I met you. But you are now, I'm I'm linking now to what Alex Moore Minot said, what um, Beverly Carey said uh, about the the strong woman. You're the only woman in a position as acting colonel, and we just call you colonel, in any maroon community in Jamaica. How difficult was it for you to achieve this position? It wasn't my doing. Where am I? What is? Oh my! I'm with you. Stay with us. <laughs> you said it wasn't your doing. What do you mean? It wasn't my doing, as in person. You know, it was bestowed on me um, by the ancestors first, and then um, at the passing of Colonel Frank Lums, then um, there was this Marcus Garvey movement in Port Maria, and Ochi. Yeah, in Ochi, in Ochi at IRFM. Thank you, Mama G. And I was supposed to make a speech. And he said to me, um, um, go ahead with the group. I will be there. 
But um, at the time I was saying, but Colonel Frank, you are sick. How are you coming? He said, I'll be there. And then when I was there now, he said to me, you are gonna have to speak. Now on the ground, that was when I know I have to make that presentation. And I said, but how? He said, yes, you can do it and you will do it. And he said, it's your time now. You have to take over. This is a time for you to move. This is a time for you to step up. Take the button, I'm giving it to you. Go ahead and speak. And I tried to question him and he said to me, you know what? I am not able to talk to you anymore. I'm just going to be relaxing, sitting there, talking to my maker, communicating with him. You need to do the work of your ancestors. And from that time until today, I know that it was a destiny, not for me to give up, but for me to actually speak as a woman to help other women or women to grow up. Um, particularly, I work mostly with young girls. Why? Because it's easier to get the message to them and it stays than when they are big. When they are big, you can talk to them, you can work with them, but they might not stay in the path that you want them to. So it's uh, not Colonel Marcel Douglas, uh, yes. I, I recall um, Colonel Frank Lums, and I can see him standing in front of me now. He, mm -hmm. he was just such a powerful figure, even though he was not a big man, you know, right. a wonderful person. But you said you work with girls now, younger women, yes. and you're giving your reason. For the, from the Maroon community, from where you are at, what are the three most important things that you need to share with these young women, whether they are from the Charlestown Maroons or just young women in general? So women in general, what are the three most important things that I would normally share with them? First, the way of life of our culture so that they can know what our culture is, what it means, um, what are, what, why is it important for us to keep that way of life alive and transmit um, from one generation to the next? Secondly, um, you might say etiquette um, belongs to another set of people, but no, it belongs to the Maroon too as well, because they know when to be up, when to be down, when to be in, when to be out. You know, they know all those things. And so we have to teach them that way. I know um, growing up in this community of Charleston, we, we were taught good manners and discipline. We could not pass Mass Joe on the street and don't say good afternoon or good morning. Because when Mass Joe go to our house, then we would have to talk to our parents and that would be another story, right? And we learned that we have to do all that. So that is one of the most important thing, the very most important thing. And then manners and respect for your elders and for each other in the community. Before right. I bring in Colonel Wallace uh, Sterling, let me ask you this. We know that on the 6th of January, our compound has a big celebration. Do you have a date when you have a big celebration in Charleston, um, uh, um, Colonel Douglas? Yes, we do. Um, we generally have our celebration on the 23rd of June of each year. And of course, um, we would take in three or four days. So the 23rd, 24th, 25th, if that fall on the weekend, and if the 23rd fall within the week, um, um, within the week, like for example, from Thursday, the would um, begins like the 23rd, but continue um, for the four days until it closes the week, weekend, because um, we have people who can only attend the function on a weekend. Yes. While we have people that can, during the week, we, we cater for our school I get children. You. I get so the you. conference provides lecture and education. So the school children will come on a school day, but we have other people that will come and experience within the weekend session. For the school children, when they come, can you give me one of the questions that yet they're always asking? What is the um, most popular question? They always ask who are the Maroons and where they are. Ah. <laughs> Okay, Colonel Wallace Sterling, could I ask you to unmute? Yes, your, your mic is unmuted. It's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure of sharing with you, sir. Thank you for joining us in this discussion. You're hearing me, sir? I am hearing you loud and clear. Wonderful. Sir, when you think of Nanny of the Maroons, so much has been said, but from your perspective as an elder in the community and a, 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 
well, we don't have some of the others that I grew up around who were the colonels at the time they have gone on, but you are here. What is it that Nanny represents to you? First of all, let me say, I mean, uh, good evening to everyone and this panel this, after, this evening. And I, I should say, you know, a big welcome, a big aquaba to, to, to everyone. And then at the end, I'm gonna, still going to tell you Medasi. But anyway, you asked me a question. Hang so on a moment. Hang on a moment. Let's deal with that. What does aquaba mean? Welcome. Welcome. And what at the end you said? I said, at the end, I'm going to tell you Medasi. I'm going to tell you, thank you. Medasi. <laughs> then we now have to learn. Yeah. So welcome to aquaba. Yeah. And I know some Aquaba and Med um, drummers. I know some Aquaba drummers, yeah. And then Medas, yeah. okay, thank you so much. Medas, 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 Medas. Okay, okay. So you asked about what Nani means. First of all, I, I choose to categorize her in four different ways, right? Yes. The one person. First of all, she was the priestess for the Maroon community. And, and I mean, from a spiritual point, point of view. She was yes. the one who would intercede with, you know, communicate with, with, with the ancestors, communicate with Itoni Yankipong. Yes. And she was basically a chieftainess. From a military point of view, she was responsible for whatsoever take place in the community, whatever the training of the warriors to go out and to fight. Hence, you have places like, you know, the Asafu Yada, the Asafu Ground, or the Asafu House, what, whatever term you, use, you choose to call it. It's basically the meeting place. It's, it's basically the training ground for the warriors. And as a woman, you know, she was responsible for that. Yeah. Then, basically, she was the queen. She was the one who, if you have to come to the community to deal with somebody as the head, then she's the one. If you were allowed to see her, that's the first thing anyway. And if, if you, you could just barge in and tell yourself that you want to speak to Nani and then, you know, everything is like that. Mm -hmm. So all in all, we refer to her as our mother. So we refer to herself as Granny Nani Yoyo because she was the mother of us all. Ne never mind, it, 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 is a, it is a difficult thing, you know what I mean? Persons might claim that they are direct descendants of granny nanny and that is not something that i claim neither would i even encourage anybody to say because in terms of genealogy it's difficult for anybody to prove that but one thing we can say you know we are all granny nanny yo -yo because she was the mother for us all it's just like somebody would say i am a jew i am a you know i'm a israeli but the person could jolly well be but does that person really related to jacob or to abram <laughs> that person was basically a part of it right yes. so as such you know you become you know what part of the the, the flag so we so see let, me, let, let me recap something here you said priestess queen mother granny nanny yo-yo what was the yo-yo and chief and mean? chief yo-yo mean that we are all children of granny nanny Huh? That's what if it, so 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 I will refer to myself as Granny Nani Yoyo or I refer to myself as Yen Kun Kun Pikibo. Meaning that Yen Kun Kun is a word that our four parents use to describe themselves. Oh. It's an Akan word. Akan. And it, it yeah, it actually means people who are self-reliant, people who depend on themselves for their own survival. Mm -hmm. I watch your back, you watch my back. Indeed. We things are held in common. And and so that's how they used to live before they came to this side of the world. You know, I love the idea of the Asufu yard. Yeah. Um, that is such a critical space, mm -hmm. the Asufu yard. Thank you for raising that. I want to just bring in, if you'll allow me at this time, because there's just so much that we need to, to do. Um, there is a lady sitting there. And I want to, Paramount Chief Mama G. Paramount Chief Mama G, Charleston Maroons. How are you? Oh dear. Oh yeah. dear. Shall I tell you that audio with that what with that lilt is just so different and it is maroon. I can identify with it. So tell me about your headdress. One of my creation. I... It stands out. It stands yeah. out. Mama G. 
lots yeah. of people um well let me bring it on to paramount chief mama g what, what how did you get that title and what does it uh mean for the for in the in the maroon community well the title paramount chief was bestowed uh, the title gaman was bestowed upon me from the surnames maroons who have that title there you know when they run away in the swamp Suriname is much bigger than Jamaica. So when they run away into the remote, remote of the forest, you have some people that never go back in the town. When you see them, it's just what they saved when they came from Africa that they still have. So they save what they say, they save the governance of what they know in Africa, in Suriname. And so you have a structured maroon governance with chief with the government at the top chief of chief then they have the basia then they have the cabinet and all these come together and so the government as is all as their own cabinet cabinet ah oh, cabinet cabinet so hang on hang on there a moment you're speaking about all of this in suriname do yes. we have a similar structure in jamaica not really, but then they were very touched too, because even after they gave me that, they find out, they ask if there's such a structure in Jamaica. And then the gaman was saying that if, if the maroon doesn't have a structure like that, then it means that they are not free. They need to have their governance, you know? So they bestowed like this upon me there. They have never given it to a woman ever there before. So I was the first woman ever for them to break their tradition and gave it to when I was there. Congratulations. What year was that? That was in 20, 20, 2014. Oh, nice. Do you ever go back to Suriname to celebrate with them? And then they came here. I requested when they did it, I was like, I didn't speak when I understand what it was for, you know? And so I said, no, can I ask one request? And they said, yes. I said can you come to Jamaica and do that? Because I will not go back and say that this is the position that I have. Oh, today. so you had gone You had gone to Suriname. They mm -hmm. gave this great honor to you, but you wanted it to be done in Jamaica in so front of- seven people down, including government worker, the ambassador of Suriname to Trinidad and traditional worker and government worker, seven people in all, and my school and everything they took here and did it at this conference here. Did you Jamaica. say, so, I mean, the, wow. Do you have pictures of that? I have a video on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay, so we can look there. Now, uh, you are from Charleston Maroons. Uh, what role do you, Trilani, pardon me? From the, I'm from Trelawney Maroons. I'm from Flagstaff Maroon, old Trelawney town. So tell me about that now, because the, the, the Trelawney Maroons, it, it go up in a cockpit country area, no, so? Yes, but I'm from the old Trelawney town in the hills of Montego Bay and on the border of Trelawney. Uh, oh. So yes, that's where yeah. my grandparents are from. So the old Trelawney town is in the hills of Montego Bay, you said? Yeah, on the border of Trelawney. And on Trelawney. the border of Trelawney. So how far away from a compound is that? A few miles. Yeah. A few miles from a compound. Do you celebrate with your a compound brothers and sisters or do you do your own celebrations in the old Trelawney town? Well, they still honor, they, they honor the 1st of March when the treaty was signed over there. Um, but I celebrated all the towns that are all right. Set. So you the in, in the old Trelawney town they observe March one over yes. in um Annette. You say you do June what date again? I wrote it down. Okay. What date? It's March, yeah, and it's June twenty-third. March rather, June twenty-three. Yeah. So where's where's Colonel Sterling? Colonel Ster um what date do you celebrate over in your community? <laughs> The third Monday of October, which is nominally National Year's Day. Ah, so it's a different so, All right. question now. People from the other communities come and visit and celebrate with you, meaning people from the other maroon communities. Yes, yes, yes. They, they do. Because what, what we do is whenever we have celebration in these maroon community, 
all the, the other Maroon communities, they do go there and pay their respect and do their performances, bring their greetings and everything like that. It's like a, it's like a part, it's something that was going on from hundreds of years now. So it's, it's nothing new to us. Okay, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, many people in Jamaica, I suppose outside of Jamaica too, when we talk about nanny, they say, Cha, I want a lady who used to work up here. I noticed you said, uh, Colonel Sterling, that she was a priestess. And sometimes people misunderstand what that means. But so them said, Cha, and talk about magic and them something there. What can we do to properly educate the Jamaican populace about who Nanny really was? Let me ask you to start off, Colonel Wallace Sterling. All right, okay. Look at religion is something else that is practiced by most persons throughout the world, right? And the word obia comes from the word ob, that all four printed are practiced when they were in Africa, right? And if you go to the Bible, you, you find that the things that, for example, let's take Moses' situation in Egypt with his rod and the, and the Pharaoh magician in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Moses' rod turned into a snake, Pharaoh magician rod turned into a snake. I mean, did anybody condemn that? <laughs> the fact that our four parents came from Africa, and if at that time rats could turn into snakes, then imagine 2,000, 3,000 years after what they could have done when they come to the side of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like, I consider myself a Christian, but I don't like to talk about religious things too much because persons are not really open-minded in, in dealing with these things. All four parents had to do what they had to do to defend themselves in their community. If today, any of these superpowers traveling anywhere in any conflict, they're gonna have nuclear weapon with them. <laughs> and they're gonna carry everything that they have. Our four parents had to use anything and everything that was at their disposal in order to defend themselves, to be triumphant in any battle that they, they undertake. And more so, it's just a, a corrupting of, the, of the, the thing, Hobia, because it was used to defend the people of the community, to protect, for healing, for everything that was good. So, you know, and, after a while, we don't use the word, we say, we call it science. Right. And I just say this that many people don't understand certain practices, just label it Hobia, and it really it may not be anything like that. So, we, we have to have another discussion on this about what Hobia is. <laughs> yeah. So, Nanny was a great leader. Nanny was an, an, an organizer of no mean order. She outwitted everybody. She was a strategist. She was a, ch a, a chieftainess. She, she was a priestess. She was wise. Uh, uh, and of course, we have the, the legends and the folklore now. But let me ask um, Alex Moore and Annet, you're both there. What is it that we need to do, maybe in the education system, to get people to understand and appreciate more the role of N Queen Nanny, national hero, the right, excellent Queen Nanny, national hero. Annette, you want to begin? What we need to do? You say you talk with the young people, but talk to me about education. You think we're doing enough in our schools where we are in terms of educating our young people, our children? No, I don't believe that. Even, even in this community, the young people don't know much about the culture. And we have to teach them. I have a daughter which involved in this culture from she's seven years old. She's the only female right now that can blow the abbey and also play the drum. And I don't think nothing interest is here to interest the young people to involve in the culture and that want to change. But how do you change that? How do we change that? Um, Mrs. Carey, how do we change that? Mrs. Beverly Carey, um, turn your right. What can we do to get young people interested and want you to know, want you to understand? Well, let me start. Do nanny exist? Here is our patent. To, to, to nanny, Negro woman and her people reside in no, she really existed. By patent, we mean our grant of land. Two of them, this is it with the plan of the land. That's more tone, lower more tone. And this is the older one. In in um it's their um 1741. So she really existed. And 
So that's the first thing we need to dispel, that she never existed. We need to, and so that information needs to be perhaps put in our books, put the Jamaica Information Service need to get that up there on their website, next to the picture of Nanny. Uh, and here Nanny is, here is the brochure of the, of the Jamaica Information Services. This one is, this one is printed 1995, um, here's Nanny, but there's nothing in there showing where Mortown is, nor the patent. No, that, that needs to be addressed. Sure, even if you don't quote the whole thing, you know, the, you could show it and have an explanatory thing that shows yeah. that it was granted to the Negro woman nanny and her people residing with her. And this is when she's up in the cut board. So you see all of the various instruments that are used for teaching has to have the facts in it. Because you can't ask you to just pause a moment. Annette, did you know, have you ever seen the patent, Annette? Yes, I do. Um, Alex Moore Minot, have you ever seen the patent? Definitely. Okay, Colonel Marcia Douglas, you've seen it? Yes, Pardon I have. Me? Yes, I have. You have. And Colonel, Colonel Wallace Sterling and Mama G, you, you both have seen this patent? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, this is important. We all know that it is, yeah. Pardon me? I said we all know of its existence and we have seen you it. You know of the existence. Time. You know of it, but have you ever seen it? Yes, I said we, so, we are so, known. Right. So, so, Mrs. Mrs. Pardon me. So, Mrs. Carey, you what you said is clearly pointing to the education ministry and the public education programs. Yes. Am I, yeah? Yes, it is correct. And also, it you you have to be able to teach that the Africans had a very good society. A better society than the one that was established in Jamaica, which was a slave society. You know, strong cultural and I mean magic. I, I don't call any of it magic at all. You know, because um, the Maroons believe that spirit beings are always around. You know, and um, you, they, they represent ancestors. And if you want to look at it in terms of um, science and physics, you might say energy. Indeed. It's nothing to be afraid of, you see, because in many of the Maroons could transmute it, is that the word, change the form, disappear in some of the legends. And my mother who taught me some of this was a very skeptical person about ancient Maroons who in Morton, of course, who um, were dissatisfied with what young people are doing, like we do today, what they want. And those people would express their good pleasure by telling you they're going to fly away. And there were people that would be seen there <laughs> who actually yes. flew away with this little dog who just arrived, went in the air until it became a speck. My mother would say, when Auntie Nizzy flew away, he disappeared. My mother would say, as a grown woman, and what men I believe that? Chop, she must have lost in the bush. But don't <laughs> tell in my room because they know she disappeared. And then come back. No, she didn't come back. She disappeared. She went back. I mean, she disappeared. The early Maroons, the early Maroons, the, Maroons the, the nanny came from a particular group of people who were great mystical people. You would call them great religious people. And um, when she came, she uh, learned a lot more when she came here. So a lot of the things that nanny was able to achieve was because of her background and the older Maroons who taught her certain things. One of the first things that happened when they came here, as, as some say that the Africans sent them to rescue the enslaved population. Mm. And that when she came here, there were three sisters of them. And when she came here, one of them decided that she would not stay. She would go back and she told them she would fly back to Africa. And when she got there, she would send a bird to tell them that she had arrived safely. So there, they, and I don't look at this as strange because nowadays that physics has developed and you get um, different new theories um, tells you about the, how energy can take its form. Like, oh, you can have ice and when it melts, you get water. You know, it's a, tra it's a change in the form of the, very, the same material. Yeah. So um, I, I accept that the, the, there's an interrelationship between the, the ancestral spirits and the maroons. There was this woman that was at Scots Hall, to be very quick, um, many years ago, 1995. Scots Hall in St. Mary. St. Mary. 
And when I got there for the celebration, she was sitting squat on the ground and she had a, some broom weed and she was sweeping it around herself. So I was very interested in this. And I asked one of the people escorting me, what was this? I'd never seen it happen before. And they said, look, she's sweeping the ground to sweep your spirit. And my own believe everybody has a spirit that is with them. It's part of their driving force. They also, I think as Miss Lou said, walk good so that good stop you walk with good you you walk with you there is the spirit there is the spirit that is with us that's what we believe each of them and so she did not want her spirit to have a disagreement with your spirit at their particular level yes, which yes. is the unseen world yeah you know yes. it's this quite is. a complex thing is nothing to be afraid of and you can go and you can compare it you go read the roman catholic church and Go read the Anglican, and you there. all That's have these things in it. It's only that is not brought into focus. So exactly. we hold on to what we have. We have our African maroon tradition, and we hold on to it because it's proved very helpful to us. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let me thank you for participating in this very important discussion. And before we go, I'm just going to allow each of you to just remind the persons of myself included what your special days i know there's october 3 but just say the, the, your community say your community and the day when you observe when right and uh, you're going to have to say it even you you just observe it you know alex we know it's january 6 but you still going to have to say it. so let me begin with um colonel marcia douglas just remind so because people are going to want to come after having this kind of discussion right because of nanny and the maroon so because nanny has a doesn't matter where the maroon community is nanny is observed and held up in high esteem so colonel marcel um where what the date remind us okay so um this year we will be having our 13 year of annual conference and the celebration and it will be held right here in the Asafia, Charlestown. Say it, say it again, please, um, Colonel Marcel. Sorry, this year will be the 14th. No, just say the name of your group and then the, 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 what you're doing. Charlestown Maroon Council. It, and the date is the 23rd to the 25th of June. Right, that's a Charlestown Maroon, 23rd to 25th of June. And you're saying something now? about what you'll be doing so it is the 14th year of conference and celebration and this okay. is where we would have um kept um the you the people would learn more about the maroon basin okay. and the topic. so that's june 23 and 20 to 25 and it's a 14th yes. conference um right. colonel wallace sterling your okay day? so and for, from where town it yeah. is generally the third Monday of October, which is nominally National U.S. Day, but okay. and it's a day when we celebrate, we celebrate Nanny. Okay. And I want to say one thing before before I, I leave. Yes, sir. For somebody, people say something about Nanny a while and whether she's real or not. But there's a song that we sing in Moortown, and you know, every Maroon community, the songs that they sing is generally what record the history of the people, right? And it tells a story. It says that Granny Nanny. She been at Tony River. And it also said that Nani Granny Nani Bina Anabo. What it means is saying that she was living in Stony River, right? And she's also from a place in Africa named Anabo, which is in Ghana. Anabo. Ah, Ghana. Thank Ghana. you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Annette, when is your date, Annette? Um, yeah, go ahead. We are a cultural group. We don't really have a date. We have our first celebration last year in Florida. Okay. Where had it? In Florida. Most what of people you, migrate you know, to Florida. That's interesting. So, yeah. That is interesting. Well, you're the director of the Granny Nanny Cultural Group. All right. Alex Moore, yours is January 6th. Our company is the 6th of January. Right. But normally, normally they have something starting on the 5th. Then, uh -huh. um, and go yeah. over into the big day on the 6th. Yeah. You know, we don't have anybody from Scott's Hall here. Would you know what day? Yeah. The, the, the first of August. Ah, the, Scott. August 1, Scott's Hall. Thank you. 
So we need to have that. Now, do we have an abang blower in the house? Is there an abang blower anywhere? Do we have an abang blower? All right. No. Um, should, we, should we treat this with reverence, Colonel Wallace Sterling? Are you the are you a regular abang blower? Um, you have to turn on your turn on Colonel Wallace Sterling's mic for me, please. So this is um this we're gonna hear there being okay. Yes. Oh, go back, go back. It's gone off. It's gone off. Right. That's it. That's it. Okay, fine. So the mic is on. I'm a regular being blow. Neither so, do I ever consider myself an being blow. Have you ever tried? What I can, it? what I will, uh, what what I can attempt to do is to sound the being, not to blow the being. So other than that, why am I blowing it? Just for just blowing it sick. Before you blow it, before you blow it, yeah. do you, what are the occasions right. on which they are being blown? Yes, what so are just, your... just one second. Just yes. one second. Let me get my, my things that I have to use to blow an abeng. Okay. Um, Colonel Marcia, now let's say you pick up yours too. What are the occasions on which the Marines blow the so abeng? The was used to transfer messages from one end to the other for, for parents. That was one of the easiest ways to communicate. Without right, but now what, what what do you do now? We're cleaning the town, we're cleaning the cemetery, a baby is born, someone has died, and much more. Oh, you still do that? Yes. So, like all the Christian church told a bell, you blow their bang. Right. And if we're going to have a meeting, we'll blow their bang to say, come, come see, come, come see, come, come see, and everyone would come. If we have an emergency, we could use a bang for that. In fact, the abeng today is the emergency call for a fire earthquake or any destruction that we are gathering for and to um, help people to know, notice that there's something really happening. If okay. we are here and there is trouble, the abeng blow, and then you will see the truth coming in from all over. So that we still use the abeng for many different reasons here in Charleston. All right, so, so we thank you, thank you for that. Abeng, yes. We have to blow it for a cost. For a cost? Yes. A cause. For a good for a reason, for a good reason. Oh, for a cause. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. So this is a um, let me just say to Mama G. Mama G, thank you so very much. We are very honored and privileged to be in your company that you were so honored by the Maroons in Suriname because it's it's a big, big honor that um they they bestowed on you and that you have shared it with us in, in, in terms of you have told us how it came about, you know. We thank you for the role that you continue to play. Respect, ma'am. So to close off this, this panel discussion now, we're going to have Colonel Wallace oh, today. Sound sound I'm not blowing any I'm going to sound the I'm not, I'm not blowing the abeng. You're not managing it. Current, um, Colonel Marcia, can you blow the Can you sound the abeng? Mm -hmm. I can nice. make a sound. This need I am here. Let us try, Colonel Marcia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've put you on the spot. It's very, very so so much. Very difficult. Yes, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for all the knowledge you have shared with us. Uh, Mrs. Beverly Carey, Colonel Marcia Douglas, Mama G, Paramount Chief, Thanks for uh, the invitation. Colonel Wallace Sterling, uh, um, Alex Moore Minot, who is the uh, Foreign Affairs Officer over in a compo, but it really come from Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> and uh, Annette Aarons, thank you so, so much. Uh, is there, uh, Annette, thank you for keeping the culture going with the group. It's very important. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. We're not finished. We're going Thank to wrap you. up now, but um, we do have Dr. Rosemary yeah. Lewis from Jodias, uh, who will bring her greetings now, uh, one of the diaspora groups out of Florida. So let's join her. <laughs> And we have the abeng blowing. <laughs> okay. Dr. Thank Rose. Thank you, Jamaicans. And